Welcome to Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain an action, adventure, fantasy, horror, sci-fi, thriller film from 2013, titled The Last Days. In my opinion this is an entertaining survival movie and it is played more than well. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. A mysterious epidemic that spreads throughout the world in 2013 causes people to develop an irrational dread of going outside. If they do, they pass away instantly. The streets of every town and metropolis on the planet quickly turn into a wasteland with no one outside. For three months, Mark Delgado has made his workplace home, subsisting on cafeteria food and assisting his colleagues in digging a tunnel leading to the subway in the parking lot. He hadn't changed into clean clothes or taken a shower in days. Back in the present, Mark informs Enrique that he needs to locate his girlfriend and that, since phones no longer receive a signal, the only reliable way to do so is with a GPS device. Enrique is given the option of taking Mark to his girlfriend in exchange for him giving him all the supplies he stole from Rovira's locker. At first, Enrique declines, but after Mark threatens to inform everyone that the GPS was stolen, he rapidly reconsiders. The two men bid their colleagues farewell and walk into the subway tunnels. While the GPS is operational, they disable it to preserve battery life and, for the time being, rely solely on a subway guide. They rush to the station, which is filled to the gills with survivors, as there are already a number of people there and they can even hear gunshots. Suddenly, a teenager takes Enrique's GPS-equipped bag. When they reach the area behind the turnstile, he and Mark begin pursuing him through the station, following him upstairs, and even avoiding a fire. The youngster joins three guys, one of whom is his brother, a former police officer who is carrying a gun. His brother locates the GPS in the backpack and moves in to grab Mark's bag as the city outside finally loses all power. Enrique jumps on the officer and fights with him for the pistol when the lights in the station also go out and Mark tackles the boy and retrieves the GPS after it falls to the ground and sustains damage to its screen. Enrique manages to take the cop's gun and kills him before shooting his colleague, while Mark hides behind a column holding the bag in his arms. Then he joins Mark, and the two of them flee, effortlessly blending in with the throng due to the darkness that has since taken over the area. They pause by the stairs to treat Enrique's cut hand and see if the GPS is still functional after it fell, which it is, thankfully. Mark fears he will be left behind when he sees Enrique keeping the gun, but Enrique insists on maintaining his end of the bargain. When Enrique doesn't appear when Mark wakes up from his nap in the present, he assumes that he has abandoned him. However, Enrique soon appears with a plastic bag he has recovered to shield the GPS from water damage. Mark also observes that Enrique preserves the seeds from every food item he consumes, including apples. They locate a sewer entrance using the GPS a short while later, leap inside without getting hurt because the water softens their fall. Once more utilizing the GPS to navigate, they finally arrive at the location underneath Mark's apartment complex. They come up with a straightforward strategy to gain access, they suspend the gas canister from the ceiling pipes, which they will then shoot to cause it to explode. Enrique misses his shot, so Mark takes over and attempts himself. He also misses on his first attempt, and the noise makes his ear bleed. He succeeds on his second attempt, though, and the ensuing detonation knocks him back to the ground. Enrique aids him in rising, and the two of them proceed to scale the ruins and enter the building, by way of the gap in the wreckage and through it. However, Mark's door's lock is broken. They can see an eye watching them through the spy hole, which enrages Mark. He begins shouting and pushing the door, which is being held back by a guy speaking a foreign language. Enrique pulls out his pistol in response to the man's knife threat, and they come to a standstill until the man's wife and daughter arrive. The young girl says that she speaks their language and that they took the apartment because it was empty because they had nowhere else to go. But Mark tells them the location is his and takes a picture of Julia from the wall to ask them if they've seen her. They then looked around the area after that. However, there are dead doves being prepared for eating, 
an old popcorn bag in the trash can from which Enrique retrieves the seeds, and he also takes a kitchen knife with him. Enrique discovers no food in the refrigerator. Mark, in the meantime, goes to Julia's workstation and after finding her puppet, he takes a drawing the child made and turns it around when he sees the name of a doctor on the corner, it's a picture of an ultrasound because Julia has been pregnant since he last saw her and he wasn't aware of it. Mark begins to recall he departed for work, he had already observed the lack of activity on the streets, the accumulation of trash in the trash cans, and the mask that one person was sporting in the subway. When he finally got to the office, he called Julia, but Andrea answered and informed him that Julia wasn't in the mood to speak right now. Mark, who was beginning to feel hopeless, made the decision to return, particularly after the phone and the nearby televisions both lost their connections. He had to rush back inside and remain there, though, because as soon as he went outside, he began to feel nauseated. It has begun to rain in the present, so Mark and Enrique use an old stretcher to assist the family in gathering water. People will soon be using poles to hold buckets and pots under the rain to replenish their water supplies throughout the city. In the evening, Mark fills different bottles with the fresh water, and Enrique carves two spears from broomsticks. In the morning, they return to the sewers, and when they come to a fork in the road, they argue over which direction to go. Enrique declines, stating that their agreement was only for him to be taken to his apartment and that it isn't his fault she wasn't there when they arrived. Mark wishes to go to the mall where Julia used to work to see if she is there. Mark becomes enraged and jumps on him to beat him up. He even pulls out his knife to protect himself and wonders aloud if Julia is even still alive. Enrique eventually admits he wants to go to the hospital his father has been staying at since he lost his ability to move due to an embolism. He also suggests Mark join him because the GPS will be Mark's once they get to the hospital. Mark agrees after some reluctance. The two discover a set of steps that lead inside a church. They search the area and discover a lighter and a hip flask with alcohol still inside, which they use along with some kindling to start a fire. They hear some nearby noises, and it appears that the light has drawn someone's attention because they take their spears and head out to investigate. They are quite surprised to discover a bear at the back of the church, which begins pursuing them right away. When Mark sees Enrique has fallen and the bear is on him as he is about to descend the sewer stairs, he decides to remain and assist. He uses his spear to prod the animal off of Enrique, who runs back to their bonfire and starts a torch to fend off the bear. This is insufficient, though, as the bear is pushing them in the direction of the exit doors. Mark therefore devises a plan, he orders Enrique to put down the torch, and when he does, the bear jumps on him. Mark then approaches him with his spear pointed at him, causing the bear to impale itself on it. When they discover a tag stating that the bear is from the Barcelona Zoo, both guys cannot help but laugh. The bear flesh they had roasted over the fire is now being consumed by them. Enrique acknowledges that before everything happened, he would have fired Mark even if he had completed the job on time and thanks him for staying rather than fleeing with the GPS. However, this admission only makes them chuckle once more. Enrique also acknowledges that he still needs to speak to his father about a few crucial issues and worries that if he passes away, no one will notice. In response, Mark explains that while he initially told Julia he didn't want children, this wasn't completely accurate and that his fear of not being able to care for and protect the child only grew as a result of the current circumstances. They return to the sewers a few hours later and find a family coming in the other way. They inform them to accompany them to the hospital because one of them is hurt, but when they arrive, they break the bad news that Enrique's father's hospital has burned down. Enrique panics and hurries into the closest building, where he enters and climbs the stairs to the top floor, where he can see the entire city and confirm the rumors that the hospital has burned down. Enrique breaks the window with a chair because he feels like he has nothing left to live for. As he prepares to leap, Mark pushes him back inside and tells him that he needs him. Enrique doesn't concur, so he gives Mark the baby seeds and tells him to go. Mark eventually arrives at the mall after passing through the sewers once more and entering through a bloody parking lot. He rushes to Julia's shop despite feeling like he's being followed, 
but all he discovers there is Andrea's mother's body. After searching through all the papers and notebooks in extreme desperation and failing to find any answers, he threw everything on the ground in rage and sobbed until he noticed something in the mirror. After clearing the dust, he discovers a letter written by Andrea to her mother informing her that they are trapped in the mall's supermarket area. Mark quickly makes his way to the area that has been blocked off so that no one fleeing upstairs can enter and steal food from them. Mark pulls out a photo from his apartment and says he doesn't want trouble, he just wants to find his partner as the men guarding them threaten him with a bow. Mark notices some shadows moving behind him as one of the men checks the rear to see if Julia is with them. A group of people who had been trailing him suddenly emerges, using the confusion Mark has caused to enter the market and engage in combat over the food. Mark enters the market as the two groups engage in a violent altercation, but instead of finding Julia, he discovers Andrea. After fending off an approaching assailant and directing Mark toward a nearby exit, she notes that the last time she saw Julia was the day before she went to the doctor. But as a burning beam drops from the roof between them, trapping Andrea between the flames and the outside world, they become separated. Mark urges her to leave after she unlocks the doors, but she is unable to do so and dies when more of the ceiling collapses on top of her. Mark doesn't squander any time and immediately begins running away before being attacked by one of the irrational raiders. Enrique appears out of nowhere just as he's about to be stabbed. He pushes the attacker away, but the assailant is still there, and he swiftly approaches once more to stab Enrique in the stomach. When Enrique sees that it's just a child, he chooses to spare him rather than pushing him away once more and impaling him with his spear. Enrique urges Mark to leave the mall immediately before it collapses. They proceed to traverse the sewers once more until they come across a ceiling hole that someone else had excavated, and when they enter it, they discover themselves in a theater. Mark notices that Julia's doctor's office is across the street. In a last-ditch effort to locate Julia inside the other building, he peers out the window. It takes him a while, but eventually he does see her. As soon as he does, he begins calling her name and banging on his window in the hopes that she will notice him too. When it initially seems as though Julia won't turn around, Mark's strategy must be working because she abruptly does, and the couple is relieved to see one another again and break down in tears. When Mark rushes downstairs to inform Enrique about Julia, he discovers him bleeding out at the theater. Then Enrique passes away, and Mark pauses to grieve for him before heeding his counsel. He and Julia arrive at their individual entrances, and after some hesitation, Enrique exits the building. His ears begin bleeding, he immediately feels sick and dizzy, and he has difficulty walking. However, he survives the fall by focusing on Julia and crawls the remaining distance as a brilliant white light replaces everything else in his field of vision. As the light fades, Mark sees he has successfully crossed the street and arrived at the building, finally finding his beloved. Suddenly, Julia's face appears above him. The couple settles in that structure and begins a new existence there, where they grow Enrique's seeds and collect rainwater. Their son is born strong and healthy, and when he can walk, he ventures outside on his own, demonstrating that the panic had no effect on the younger population. Many years later, when some wandering teens knock on their door, Mark and Julia decide to invite their son to stay with them so he can experience life outside of their small community and perhaps even have the opportunity to start anew. This is a good European catastrophic movie and the filmmaker paid attention to details. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Your support would be appreciated. I hope to see you next time.